Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at two key legacy Windows features, which no longer work uh, if you sign into Windows normally and use Windows without changing any defaults. And we're going to fix that. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is is Twit. Twit. And today I'm going to take a look, I was going to say today in this very special episode of Hands on Windows, we're going to take a look at two legacy features of Windows, uh, each of which has been in the product for over 20 years. Um, They're still there and they do not work, right? And they don't work because most people sign in with a Microsoft account, which is the normal way to do things. Um, And the default configuration of Windows just prevents these features from working. So I have Uh, come up with some workarounds. There are others, but I've come up with some workarounds so that we can use both of these things. Um, And and just the the quick history here is that in the pre-Windows NT days, you know, you got a computer, had Windows whatever on it, Windows 3.1, Windows 95. You turned it on and you used it, and there was no concept of user accounts. Um, With NT, well, before NT, we had user accounts, but they weren't secure. With NT, we had secure user accounts that were actually separated from other user accounts, and these senses of uh, permissions and uh, different account types and so forth. And we've had different ways of doing things, right? So Windows XP, which was the first mainstream version of this product, introduced something called simple file sharing to support sharing files over the network, relegating the old version to advanced file sharing. Uh, Both of those are still in Windows today and Windows 11. Um, Windows XP also debuted something called Remote Desktop. And Remote Desktop was a way that you could sign in to one of your other computers remotely in a window on a computer, right? So you have two computers on a network. You're on computer A. You type in your account information and the name of the computer. It goes over the network. Window comes up, and it's like you're sitting there using that computer. Also still available in Windows 11 today. Um, Both of them do not work. (laughs) So let's take a look at that, right? So... Network file shares um, kind of solves a classic problem, which is you have at least two computers. You have a file or some number of files on one computer and you want to get them to another computer, right? Um, I would say most people today probably know that the easiest way to do that is to just mail it to yourself, right? Use Gmail or Outlook or whatever you're using. Um, If the file's too big or there are too many files, you plug in a USB uh, flash drive or USB hard drive copy the files over, sneaker net it over to the second computer. But there are more sophisticated ways to do sharing. And, and I've documented this stuff. Um, there is a, a share interface in Windows that nobody knows about and nobody uses. And actually, that's the wrong version. So let me go to this. Um, and, you know, <laughs> we're trying here in, in Windows land, right? Um, Microsoft is adding the ability uh, to email yourself from this interface. They've added a feature called Nearby Share, which is the one I use a lot. Um, in the, Back in the day, we had things like Home Group, remember, from Windows 7 that kind of came and went. Uh, but nothing has really stuck, um, except that, interestingly, let me navigate to the file system here. If I go to, let's say I want to share my desktop. Right. I, the idea being that I want to copy files to and from it to other computers. So I'll just go to my user account to desktop and I right click properties. This is an interface that has been in Windows for almost 25 years, literally. This thing up top, which is sort of the current version of doing this, is the version that debuted in Windows XP. Uh, is what used to be called simple file sharing. Uh, the version below it is now advanced sharing, of course. It doesn't matter which of these you use. Frankly, neither one of them works. It doesn't matter. But the idea is you go and say, I do want to share this thing. You can set some permissions. If you don't care about security, which you should, but let's just pretend you could say, I want everyone to have full control. And you click OK and you go through the whole process. And what should happen is that you browse your network from another computer. This PC shows up as an item. This folder shows up as an item and you can copy back and forth because you just said everyone can copy, can write and read and do whatever they want. And it does not work. So um, I've already configured this here. So what I'm going to do is just show you what it looks like when you try to access that share that I did not just create, but let's just pretend that I did. Um, And, you know, in this case, this is just a screenshot of, me earlier on this same computer trying to access a share that I created on a second computer, desktop computer. 
Uh, that desktop computer is called HP Mini. That's the name here. Uh, in the share desktop like we just did. And unfortunately, when you uh, step through, it just says cannot, cannot access. You get all kinds of different error messages. There are error messages related to your sign-in account, uh, which in this case is a Microsoft account. There are error messages related to just basic networking. Um, you know, if you, uh, I've already enabled this, of course, but if you go into network for the first time, you'll get a little drop down that says, hey, we're, we're not, open to the network. Do you want to open this thing up? And you can say yes. Um, and when you do that, it enables you to see all the devices on your network, which in my case is mostly Sonos speakers apparently, but I do have this one computer that um, I did eventually um, set up a file share on, right? All right. So how do you solve this problem? Um, the problem is that sharing, simple sharing or advanced sharing was set up for local accounts, not for Microsoft accounts. If you type in your Microsoft account, name, you know, paul at throt.net or, you know, bob at hotmail.com or whatever it is, and then type in that account's password, it will not let you in. Even if you are signed into the other computer with the same user accounts, it's not going to let you in. So the workaround, and it is a workaround, I want to be clear about this. This is not a, I'm not solving a problem. I'm, I'm working around a problem is on both computers. You go into the accounts settings in the settings app. You go to other users, which is where you configure sign-in accounts, and you create a local administrator account, which I've already done. But the process for that is, actually, it probably doesn't have to be administrator. I always do administrator, but I, because there's a password, and I'm not really that worried about it on my home network, but uh, this computer's not leaving the house. It's okay. Um, you don't have this person's sign-in information because we're not using a Microsoft account, right? Without a Microsoft account, you have to kind of step through this, and then you get to this local user account. This is what you're going to create. You're going to create them on the wrong computer here. I'm typing on the wrong keyboard. But you type in some name, you type in passwords, et cetera. Now you have to actually type in passwords. And the thing that's uh, a little goofy about this, in fact, I'll just do this. Um, type in the same password twice. Totally didn't type in one, two, three, four both times, by the way. Um, and then you get down and you have three security questions you have to choose from and then answer. What's your first pet name? You know, your, you can see what the choices are. So you, ha you have to do this. It won't let you not do this, right? Because they don't want, this account to be totally insecure. They want you to have a way to recover it. Um, it doesn't have anything up in the cloud that can help you recover. So I'm not going to do this now because I've already done it. But you create this account on both computers. Um, you have to sign into the account once on both computers. Um, you don't have to use the account in any way, shape, or form. In fact, once you've signed in, you're done. You don't have to ever touch it again. But once you've done that, um, any shares you set up uh, or any shares you set up, you will now set up to share with that account, right? Not with everyone, not that everyone gets in, it's wide open wild west stuff, but you actually set it up to share through that account that you set up in both computers. So I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna to go to desktop and I'm gonna to go to properties. And I'm gonna share, right? I'll do advanced sharing, I think, why not? Uh, like I said, it doesn't matter which one. Actually, you know what? Let me do the second one because I wanna I want to choose the, uh, I wanna choose the person. I can see Bob is in there. I can add Bob. And then I can set permissions, right? Read, write. I want this per using this person's credentials, this user account's credentials. I want to be able to um, read and write to the share. And then I can share it. I probably screwed everything up by doing that, but there it is. It's shared. And I've set this up on the second computer already. And so I could go to, well, there's a couple of issues, actually. Normally, I would just, I already know exactly what the path is. And you can see I've already typed it in a bunch of times because I've been testing this. But HP Mini is the name of the computer, like I said, and desktop. And there you go. And so you can see a couple of video files that I copied over earlier. And you can see this little text file I created to prove to myself that I made it through the network, like the little tunneling rat that I am. And it works. And this is a really stupid thing to have to do. I want to be super clear about this. but uh, for all of our modern and sneaker net and email based ways of sharing, honestly, if you have a home network, this is so fast and so reliable. It's just that setting up is terrible. So if you were confused in any way by the instructions I just gave, cause I would, I didn't want to do it live, uh, cause you have to go to two different computers and set all that up. Um, I set it up in advance. I, I did write an article about this on throt.com. So you can look that up. Uh, it's free to everybody. So, uh, definitely do that. So the second legacy feature, and this one also debuted in Windows XP, is remote desktop, right? Um, there are rules with remote desktop um, to 
at, to have remote, to be a remote desktop host, to be the computer that someone is remoting into, if you will, um, you have to be running the pro SKU of Windows or higher. That's still true today. So back in that day, I think it was Windows XP Home and Windows XP Pro, right? Professional. Uh, today we have Windows 11 Home and Pro, same thing, right? So you can't remote desktop into an, a Windows 11 Home or Windows 10 Home computer. To do that, you would need third-party software. So I'm using Pro here, so that's one thing. You have to enable this feature first. Uh, let me do that on the correct computer, actually. Uh, and the way you do that is in system, and believe it or not, there is a feature called Remote Desktop. Just turn it on. Uh, there's a couple of options here for uh, that you don't need to worry about. If, unless you've been screwing out with networking, uh, everything here will work. I'm not going to turn it on here because I'm not remoting into this computer. I'm going to use this computer to remotely access a different computer. Now, the trick here is somewhat similar to the issue we have with the file shares over the network, right? Microsoft account credentials do not work by default. So if I come up here and I, I run remote desktop, which is the client, it's already got the name of the computer built in there. Uh, or, uh, you know, it will ask me the first time I've already done it, unfortunately, so I can't show you this, but it will ask me to supply a username and a password. You can type in your Microsoft account again, you know, Bob at hotmail.com or whatever it is, or whatever password you have and hit enter. It's going to say, Burp, nope, not doing it. And that's when you kind of head to Google and try to figure out what's going on here. Now, in this case, I did discover multiple workarounds, but the way that I solve this and, uh, using the wrong computer when I do this, but the way I solved this was to go into the settings app, go to accounts. Now, to be clear, you're doing this on the computer that you want to remote into, right? So I, don't, I wouldn't actually do it on this computer. This is the computer I'm gonna use to use remote desktop. But on the computer you want to remote into, uh, you go in here and you go to sign in options. And this is something you've probably never thought about too much, right? You sign into Windows 11 in this case, or Windows 10, it doesn't matter, with a Microsoft account. You had to set up a PIN. This is a requirement. And this option right here is why that was a requirement, because this is the default setting for Windows 10 and 11. For improved security, only allow Windows Hello sign-ins for Microsoft accounts on this device. In other words, if you have a Microsoft account, you can't just configure it to use your password. You have to configure at least a PIN a pin being the most basic form of Windows Hello. If you have facial recognition or fingerprint recognition, it will prompt you during setup to set those up as well, but that's optional. You have to set up a pin. So you have a pin. Um, what you do is you uncheck this, you sign out, which I'm not going to do because I'm re recording, don't want to lose the recording. Um, you sign in to the same account, but you don't use a pin. You choose to use your password. You type in your full password and you sign in. Once you've done that one time, you can now connect remotely using remote desktop. Once you have done that one time, you can then come back in here and turn this back on. It doesn't matter anymore. You can keep using a pin. You do not have to use a password. So you just have to do that once. And I did do this once on the computer I'm connecting to and to some other computers. Of course, it didn't connect <laughs> okay. um, because it's off. But okay. So unfortunately, let's see if I can get it to go. Yeah, it's, 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 I, the computer unfortunately is shut down. Now let me turn it on. Hold on one second. Um, yeah, there we go. So it will, it prompts me now for this password, right? Now on that computer, I actually do sign in with a pin, but because I did this one time, I can type in this, I'm on the rock. <laughs> I have two computers going and I'm not smart enough to handle that. Uh, I type in that. I'll remember myself this time. Now you're going to get this error dialog, which looks scary, but this really just has to do with certificates and things that we cared about in 2001, 2002. It doesn't really matter in your home network. It's okay. So just say, okay. And then you will remote into something that should be familiar because this was how I did that Windows 10 episode we did, right? I have this older computer that I installed Windows 10 on. I wanted to talk about it on the podcast, but I didn't want to install the recording software on it. So, so that's fine. I'll just remote desktop. I've been around a long time. I know how to remote desktop and it didn't work. <laughs> so I had to look it up. And like I said, there are, there are workarounds and I found one. I explained it to you, but this was how I got that to work. And so uh, you can use this full screen. I won't do that right now, but um, you know, it's the full experience, right? You've got this, it's a, it's just like you're sitting in front of it basically. 
And uh, that's how it works. And if I turn this off, it will actually just sign out, right? Um, Windows client versions of Windows only support one user at a time. So when I'm signed in remotely, like I was here, I can't use that thing interactively. If I, if I or someone else came down, sat down next to it and start, you know, signed in from there, I would get cut off on the remote desktop. That's how that works. But um, anyway, not as convoluted as as, as a network based uh, file share or folder share, but um, still requires work around. I would imagine there are other things that have occurred in Windows over the years that um, have caused some problems with some legacy features. But to me, those are the two big ones. And uh, I, like I said, I would describe either one of these as solving a problem, more like working around a problem. But if you have this need or one of these needs, um, at least know that you can do that. And I think these are powerful features uh, that a lot of people today don't really think about or use. So it's something certainly to consider. So uh, I hope you found this helpful. Um, we will be back each week with a new episode of Hands on Windows. You can find out more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, especially if you're a club member, we think. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Uh, and I will see you again next week.